Um, hello, I'm Nari Yoshida from NTT Security Japan. And uh, currently, I'm a PhD student at Waseda University. I will present you a joint work with Tachio Terauchi at Waseda University. This talk is about repairing those vulnerability of real world regexes. So I'd like to start my presentation by explaining what is a regex. A regex is a pattern used to match uh, character combinations in strings. And uh, regexes are used in many places. For example, um, they are used for sanitizing user input, and they are used for extracting data from unstructured text. And many modern programming languages provide regexes as a general purpose library. So regexes are ubiquitous in the real world. But unfortunately, uh, despite the widespread use of regexes in practice, there is a problem. The problem is regexes are hard. This is because uh, regexes are simply too complex. For example, imagine that we need a regex for validating an email address. Then we can prepare the regex by writing it manually or uh, reusing it from the website such as Stack Overflow. And then we need to validate the regex is correct or not by using the test cases. And in this case, we assume that the validation failed. But, uh, so we need to repair the regex, but as you can see, the regex is too complex to repair. But if we cannot repair the regex, then we cannot, reuse the, we cannot use the regex. Or if we incorporate the regex into a program, then it may become a bug, so this is a problem. But fortunately, we have a solution to the problem. The solution is to use programming by example tools. Um, programming by example tools allows us to write or repair regex automatically, and the only thing we need to do is to prepare examples, and the examples are our intention. And in this case, there are two types of examples. The first one is positive examples, and the second one is negative examples. Positive examples are strings uh, that, uh, to be accepted by the regex that we need, and uh, negative examples are strings to be rejected by the regex. So in this, case, in this situation, we have the test cases, so we can reuse it as the examples. And once we input the examples into the programming by example tools, then the, the programming by example tools automatically find the regex that correctly classify these examples. So we do not need to write regex by ourselves. But now we have a question. The question is this one. Um, are we free from the difficulty of regexes? Unfortunately, the answer is no, because we are still facing the difficulty of their vulnerability called regular expression denial of service, or LIDOS for short. And actually, existing programming by example tools may generate a regex that is vulnerable to regular expression DOS. And uh, regular expression DOS is a vulnerability that exploits the behavior of backtracking matching algorithms of regex engines. And uh, due, to the despite, uh, due to the widespread use of regexes in practice, LIDOS is a significant threat to our society. So to rectify this situation, we introduce a tool called Remedy. Uh, Remedy is a programming by example tool to repair the LIDOS. And uh, so it takes two inputs, the first one is regex, and the second one is examples. The output of remedy is a regex that correctly classifies these examples and is invulnerable to regular expression DOS. And the point of this work is here. So remedy can handle real world regexes. So this means that remedy can handle a regex uh, that have real world extensions such as lookarounds, capturing groups, and back references. This point is important because this extension enhances the uh, expressive power of regex. So this means that we do not have the definition of regular expression DOS of real world regexes. So this is our contribution. So the first one is we give the definition of regular expression DOS of real world regexes. And then we give the condition to, the, to endure the LIDOS invulnerability, and we define the uh, repair problem by using the condition. And the last contribution is an algorithm for solving this repair problem. So in the rest of this talk, I'd like to explain these contributions one by one. And the first one is the definition. So to define the LIDOS vulnerability of real-world regexes, recall that LIDOS is a 
vulnerability about the behavior of backtracking matching algorithms. So to define the Redox vulnerability formally, we need to, we first need to define the behavior of backtracking matching algorithms. And so we define the uh, behavior as the matching relation. Oh, sorry. And uh, the definition of matching relation is this one. So let's see the left hand side. And this is a tuple that represents a state of regex engine. And it consists, it have four elements. The first one is regex, and the second one is um, input string, and the third one is a position on the input string, and the last one is an environment. An um, environment is uh, used for back references, and it stores uh, strings captured by capturing groups. And the right hand side is the result of the matching. So we can read this as a regex R try to match the input string W on the position P with the uh, information of capturing group gamma. And then uh, this is the result. So the regex can change the input position P and um, environment gamma to the next input position P I and next ga environment gamma I. So this models the behavior of backtracking matching algorithms. So that is, this models the behavior of regex engines. So next we define the learning time and uh, here we define the learning time as the size of the derivation tree of the matching relation. So this one, oh, can I see this? And, uh, and then now we can define the Lidos vulnerability and this is the definition. So we say that a regex R is vulnerable to regular expression DOS if there exists an input string W uh, that takes super linear time. So this, mod uh, this defines the Lidos vulnerability of real world regexes. Next, I'd like to explain the condition to ensure the Lidos invulnerability. And to define the, def to define the condition, uh, we consider the root cause of the Lidos. And the root cause is uh, backtracking due to the ambiguity of regular expression. So to ensure the Lidos invulnerability, uh, we enforce that uh, the regex do not have the ambiguity. And uh, this is an example of the idea. So in this case, this regex is for an email address, and this is so simple, but it's too relaxed. It means that uh, since this is a regex for an email address, these sub-expressions, this one and this one, do not need to accept the character at usually. So by using the example, uh, we disambiguate this one to like this one. And we formulate this, con uh, this idea uh, uh, as a condition called real world strong one ambiguity. Uh, we, does not, uh, we do not explain the detail in this talk, but you can find the detail uh, in our paper, so please read this. And then by using the condition, we define the repair problem. The repair problem takes three inputs. The first one is regex, and second one is positive examples, and the last one is negative examples. And the output of this problem is uh, regular expression, but that, that, that correctly classifies uh, these examples, uh, this is for the correctness, and uh, the regex sat satisfies real world strong one and ambiguity, this is for Lidos invulnerability. And in addition to that, uh, we require that the uh, edit distance between the input regex and output regex is minimal. This is for the quality of repair. Uh, I, will, I will explain why we need this condition in the later of this talk. This talk. So this is the definition of repair problem. And uh, this problem is, is NP hard. We can show this by a uh, reduction from the from N, uh, exact cover, which is uh, NP complete. So this is a condition. So finally, I'd like to explain the algorithm for solving the repair problem. Our algorithm is basically use enumerative search. So our algorithm enumerate the candidates of the solution, and but. Of course, it takes a lot of time. So to improve the learning time, we use uh, planning by approximation and uh, SMT-based constraint solving. And uh, this is a high-level overview of our algorithms. And so our algorithm consists of three components. And in this talk, I'd like to explain these two components. So let's see the first one. And in this component, the algorithm generates a template. A template is a regex with holes and holes are represented by square. And this means that uh, the sub-expression represented by square is under repair. 
So this algorithm replaces sub-expressions with holes and replaces, replaces holes with the other sub-expressions that consist of holes and the other operators. And then the algorithm checks whether the template has a solution or not. To check this, the algorithm generates a constraint by using the template, template and examples. And if the constraint is satisfiable, then the template has a solution. So the algorithm replaces the holes with a set of characters, yeah, like this one. And if it is not satisfiable, then the template does not have a solution, so the algorithm backs to the first step and uh, tries to the next template. So this is the uh, algorithm, and we have implemented this algorithm as a tool called Remedy. So we evaluated Remedy on real world data set. So I'd like to show some results of these evaluations. And uh, the first one is for efficiency, and the second one is for quality. And let's see the result for the quality, uh, efficiency first. And this is the result. Um, Remedy could solve about 82% of rejections within about one second on average. And uh, next is for quality, but before I show the result of quality, I'd like to explain what is a high quality. Uh, Remedy is a tool that's based on the uh, programming by example method. And uh, the goal of the programming by, programming by example is to find what the user intended. So the repair is good if it is similar to what the user intended. But as you know, we do not know, know the, no, we do not know what the user intended. So we use the assumption. And the assumption is uh, the input rejects may be uh, incorrect and may, it's maybe um, vulnerable, but it is similar to what, user, what the user intended because the input rejects is prepared by the user. So based on this assumption, uh, we use edit distance as a metric. So, so that is, uh, so, and this is the result. And uh, about 81% of rejects were repaired within the small edit distance. And the average ratio of change was about uh, 24%. So this is the result of the research questions. So uh, now I'd like to conclude my presentation, but before that, um, we have uh, the artifact is available, and the artifact is remedy, so you can find artifact uh, by this link, or how to say this figure, or the same link is in our paper, so please read our paper to find this artifact. Thank you. So uh, if you have questions, please uh, step to the microphone so that online attendees can hear you. Also, please uh, state your name and your affiliation. For example, I'm Gary Tan uh, from Penn State. Hi, I'm Max, I'm from uh, Northeastern. I wonder if you think similar vulnerabilities might exist in program synthesis tools from the formal methods community other than just programming by example, like programming from specification style tools? Um, can okay, you repeat that? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, in informal methods, people mm -hmm. build tools that try to synthesize a program mm -hmm. based off a specification, mm -hmm. like based off some logical property. Mm -hmm. And so um, that seems similar to the programming by example. And I wonder if maybe there are vulnerabilities in a lot of these other tools because nobody's thought about the security implications of um, them. This tool is about only for the Lidos vulnerability, so I'm, I'm not sure of uh, the differences between this one and the other one, so. Okay. Okay, um, so thank you. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Drew Dean from Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, in your um, minimality metric, did you consider uh, edit distance, I, I'm a little bit puzzled by, did you consider, for example, the difference in the languages accepted? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, I, we consider the uh, language similarity as uh, one of the candidates of the metrics, but um, we use this metrics because, the, um, how to say, this is programming by example, so the original input rejects may be uh, incorrect. So the language similarity, uh, in that case, the language similarity does not have the meaning, so we use this uh, 
the similarity from between the input regex and output regex as um, our metrics. So, is that answered? Mm -hmm. Ah, thank you for that. So there's an online question from Michael Flanders. Uh, how fine-grained are the semantics for the regular expression matching? Could you also use this for detecting side channels in regular expressions? That is, how long should uh, input take to match compared to input two, uh, which also matches for a regular expression? I think it's a question about side channels. Can you use this to detect side channels in regular expression matching? Uh, it may be uh, used to how to do that. Um, yeah, it may be used to side channel, but I, I'm not sure about that. Okay, I have a question about um, the examples, right? Mm -hmm. So your algorithm takes a set of examples. Yes. Um, how does the completeness of the examples affect your algorithm? Oh, yes, this one is sound and complete because it basically it uses an um, enumerative search. So if uh, it has um, enough time, then it will uh, find the solution. All right, thank you. Thank you.